So thanks everyone for joining us. I, um, if you were on December's um, monthly community call, we were talking about workplace and we, were ha we had some questions about um, calendar and the events and that sort of thing. And so I thought I'd ask Kelly to just give us a little showcase to, um, to kind of be more efficient about that and understand how those functions work. And then there's plenty of time for Q&A after that if you have other specific questions about workplace. So I'm just gonna turn it over to Kelly and um, feel free to put some questions in the chat and we can address those uh, at the end. Oh, wonderful. Thanks, Erin. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today on this wonderful and perhaps snowy Friday, depending on where you're located. Uh, yes, yeah, so I thank you for, uh, you know, still taking an interest in asking these questions about workplace. And um, I did put together a slide presentation that uh, really focuses on the specific questions. And then, as Erin said, just echoing her, take some questions. And at that point, um, depending on what the question is, I will probably bring up the workplace platform so we can go through it together. Uh, I tried to make it very like showcasey, but um, if you Google showcase showdown, price is right. It's, it's really not as interesting as you want them to be. Um, so <laughs> there we go. All right. All right. So one of the first questions was regarding sh just basically the, the premise of sharing your events or your news to a larger audience. And um, that's actually very easy to do. Uh, you know, there are some questions that you want to ask yourself about, like, I want more people to know about this. Like, are they um, going to be able to participate? Uh, how do they participate? Um, is it more of just like, we want you to know this is going on? It's just questions to think about. But in general, we have our SUNY announcements page turned on and set so that anyone can post an announcement. We just approve it. So what we're not approving right now is if you have a, a job posting. And if you've tried, I apologize, I do try to reach out to everyone just to say, you know, we're not post, we're not approving those because we don't want this to feel like there's a poaching going on or any sort of, um, you know, it's not what it's for, quote unquote. We are working with SUNY HR on what uh, we're going to do about that because they um, try to promote their website that has all of the job opportunities at the campus. But I understand that if, if I saw Aaron posting a position, I could then reach out to Aaron and ask questions, you know, just get a little more clarification on the job or maybe she could put in a good word for me on the on the, the side. But um, just in general, anything outside of those, you know, vacancy announcements is generally approved. Sometimes I'll actually push it back and say, um, you should put the link in here or I checked out the website. Uh, can you edit it to include this because I think people really um, that's a good hook for you. So I'm always there to um, not only facilitate you posting in that space, but also help maybe amplify the message or if it looks awkward. It's one of the drawbacks is that I can't go in and just edit your post, which is great because you own it. It's your content. You may have phrased that a certain way. I just want to check with you um, to make sure that uh, you're putting your best foot forward or perhaps the um, the cost is wrong compared to what I see on the website. So, so I'm there as your second in command, as your co-pilot to help you. Um, you can also obviously use it to post updates about your event. Usually the good guideline is like two posts about an event, maybe three, and they should always be different um, asks or content or announcements. So you know, you might start off with a, you know, we're announcing this year's conference. It's blah, blah, blah date at blah, blah, blah campus. And um, we're now accepting abstracts. So here's the website for the conference. Here's the abstract link. Um, feel free to share. And then let's say registrations open, room blocks have been set up, keynotes have been announced. That's another opportunity for you to then go back and promote the same event. What we don't really want to see are the same um, like generic posts, a lot of duplication. You know, the same URL is fine, but you might switch it up with a photo or two. And um, if you want to experience or if you want help with that, really sketching out your communication plan. Obviously, I'm going to bump Aaron. I'm sure would be glad to help you, but then myself. So I'm here to really help you um, engage your audience. And there might be some groups that you are not a part of that might be interested in another angle of your event or announcements. And it could be um, even if you were having an art show opening or um, it doesn't have to be a webinar or an in-person conference. It could be that a visitor's coming or that you're having a book uh, promotion 
you know, we can really think outside the box because it's really anything in announcements that we want to announce to our full campus ecosystem. Um, you can also create an event, and we're going to talk about events in a, in a couple more slides, but if you do create an event for SUNY announcements, I would really um, discourage you about inviting everyone, and if you haven't seen how to create an event, I'll show you, and at the end it asks if you want to invite everyone. Um, that can be pretty tricky because then you might get a lot of backlash with people saying like, um, I do not live anywhere near this and I'm not interested and please stop, you know, that's, that's like the very um, far end of the spectrum of the announcements, but uh, a lot of our users are still very protective of their email space and if you do invite them, they will get an email inviting them. Um, so just think about that. Um, if you try to invite them, Workplace will also warn you against spamming all members. So just don't be surprised. And if you, again, have questions about that, just double back with me and, and ask um, what you think would be in the, the best interest. Um, I can also share it on your behalf. If you don't feel comfortable sharing it, um, just let me know and I'll post it for you and I'll probably tag you as the person that they should contact. And then you can actually follow up and say, um, you know, hey, this is going on at my campus. If you have any questions, contact me here. Um, we're really looking forward to getting these, these people to come to our campus. So, you know, there's, there's a variety of ways that we can get creative. And the idea is that we're, we're framing our content and interesting, we're being concise. And um, we're just really providing that accessibility to everyone. Like, we want you to know this is going on on our campuses. Um, so that, is, that was one question that was specifically asked. Um, we also have SUNY in the news, which I don't have a slide for that, so I'm just going to kind of riff on that. But if you have a news article that has been like circulated through your campus and you think more campuses would be interested, you want to brag a little bit, you want to share the good news, you can send that to me and I will post it in SUNY in the news. That actually has the posting cut off, so it's just the administrator posting. However, I do schedule those posts. So what I'll let you know, and, I, and I've done this a bunch of times, is someone will send me an article from their campus and I will say, um, sometimes I've already actually had that article scheduled to post because I try to do my due diligence and really crawling the whole SUNY news space to find articles from all the institutions and in different areas, um, as well as the research foundation. But if it's something I haven't seen, I'll let you know when I'm scheduling it. So then you can be on a lookout for that. Um, but I, I, I can brag and say that there's been a few times that I've already had it uh, enclosed in there. And, um, and we'll go on a little bit more about the SUNY the News and announcements in a few slides as well. Um, hey, Kelly, can I interrupt yeah. for a second? Sure. So there's a third group. I just don't want people to be confused. There's a group called Open SUNY Announcements and Events. And so that is really geared for those announcements that pertain to online teaching and learning mm -hmm. and those events that, you know, are for that audience. Um, but I just wanted to ask, would everybody in the Open SUNY Announcements and Events group be part of SUNY Announcements as well? Because yes. I think everybody's in that larger one, right? Yeah. Yep. Okay. That's a default group, which will. So when they're thinking about posting it, it's, do I want all of SUNY to know about this? Or is this really targeted for just online folks, which in which case it would be in that group? Yeah, and I mean, and if it was even that specific, right, so you're talking about the online, you could still share it to the announcements, but we'd want to make sure that we're not duplicating the message. So the message to your online cohort, your, your, your close peeps in the field, right, might be more detailed than you might put out to the larger group, we're looking for vendors or sponsors for this event. Mm -hmm. You know, we have attendees from X amount of campuses. If you have someone you'd like to suggest, you know, or have a thing either right below or email, you know, email me. So it, it's just a different conversation and you can share the same information in multiple different ways. You just don't want to make sure that you're overlapping or and really duplicating your efforts when you don't have to be. Yeah. And I know you're going to show some different ways to post things. So that's great. Yeah. Yeah, Thanks. exactly. And, and you can also, you know, if you post it, you can also take it down. So that's the other thing that I, I always tell people about workplaces like you can undo a lot of what you do so if you didn't really you know think that that was as effective you can delete it right <laughs> um, to know. Yep. you know as long as you don't want to delete like great conversations and awesome information but there might be a time or you can edit your own post right so I can't edit your post but you can certainly go back and change your information 
um, which I think sometimes gets away from us. Um, but yeah, so we're gonna move on to the calendar piece, right, which was more specific events. So we had a, a few questions about the calendars and just really how to share that information and make it, people aware of how, how you can use calendars, but also to make our users and our colleagues that are on Workplace, um, you know, have a more of an awareness or an understanding that these events are going on. So everyone has, you know, everyone has a profile, but more so everyone also have um, the opportunity to have their own calendars uh, in there. And, and basically the calendar is populated by events that are created in the groups that you belong to. So hopefully I've explained that well. Um, so you, everybody has their own profile, everybody has their own calendar. You might decide to heavily use the calendar, you might decide to, to not really pay attention to it, but know that it is there. You'll also see that um, this, this little photo I've shared, that there's a calendar, celebrations, and hosting. Um, you know, the, the main page you're going to see are your events. So it's just going to show you your upcoming events. So these are events it, that are happening in groups that you belong to. So you can see that I've, um, you know, I am obviously I'm hosting my own open hour in a couple of weeks. I've been invited to a discussion about teaching in a group and a fact meeting. So these are ones that I've been invited to that are um, my groups have indicated that I should be aware of or that I want to join. Um, I'm going to show you calendar later, um, but if you clicked on the calendar, it would eventually show you all of your events that are coming up um, in a calendar form, essentially. Celebrations, you now have the opportunity to add your start date and your birthday to your profile. And what that'll do is that'll start populating celebrations of your friends. Um, well, they're your friends, hopefully, right? We're friends. Um, <laughs> just like that Facebook lingo getting switched around. But your colleagues and other people that you interact with in the system. So, um, you know, look for that on the horizon. A lot of people don't have that information in their profile, but you're more than happy. Um, I, I encourage you to do it if, if that's something that you're into. If you prefer people not to know when your birthday is, and obviously no year, um, or your start date, you can leave that blank. That's perfectly fine. Um, you can, uh, you know, check that out at a later time, experiment with that, but just that's what that means, celebrations. Um, there might be some other ones that come up eventually as the you know, the system evolves. And then there's hosting. So I can see that I'm hosting one event there as well. Um, so this would be available if you're looking at your browser on the underside, left-hand side events. You would click on that and it would show uh, you the image that's on the right. Um, let me see here. Okay, so there's also the premise of group calendars. So not only do we have our own personal calendar and look and feel of events for our uh, persona in workplace, but there's also the group calendar feature. So to look at that, um, and I have my image on the next slide, so let me see, I'll just pop. So you see this here, um, this is really, what we're going to be looking at, but I wanted to go back. There you go. So um, you can actually find this if you went to the Open SUNY uh, online teaching or any of the groups that you're in right now. If they have created an event, you should definitely see an event tab. Um, if you're in a group and you can't find the event tab, it just means that no one has created an event for that group yet. Um, it might show up and just be empty as well. So those are all different views that you might experience. But um, if you're able to see the, the events tab in the group space, you'll be able to find all the events that have been specifically created for that group by either a member or the administrator of, of the group. And this is the events that are specifically pertaining to that group. So, you know, Erin is having this uh, webinar. She might want to invite all the members of, uh, you know, her Tupperware lovers group to it. Um, I just made that up. Obviously, I don't know if you love Tupperware or not, but um, you would then create the event for only that group, and then you would be able to invite every member of your group to that. Um, this is, again, the very specific invitations, and they'll be displayed in the calendar. Um, it'll also ask you again if you want to share, um, excuse me, if you want to invite everyone or just create the calendar. So those are two different things. You can either just create the event for the group or you can create the event and subsequently invite everyone. Um, it, it, there's a different premise for both. 
you should ask yourself the question like, is this more of an FYI or is this an invitation? So if I knew that the Tupperware Lovers Convention was happening in San Francisco in January, I would want my group to know but I'm not necessarily going to invite them all because that might open more questions. It's just to get it on the calendar. And you could also then reference this in a post and refer back to the event. You can even get the URL of the event and share it in your group. Um, if I was hosting a session at this Tupperware convention that I made up, I would then want to invite everyone. And it would say Kelly's session at the Tupperware convention. Um, are you going to be able to come see me? And then I'm actually having a more active ask. Same thing with a webinar like we're on today or um, you know, an event where we know that most of our group members are more likely to actually attend or be there. Um, so those are just some things to, to think about. And again, as a reminder, once you create the event for your group, um, it'll also populate in their personal calendar space. And this is the photo again that I quickly jumped to before so you can see the tabs here the typical discussion where we have our conversation and then you should be able to see the events tab if you look at that you'll see that um, we have two upcoming events for the group um, I haven't been invited to these I guess I have but I didn't say if I was interested so I apologize um, and these again um, and Erin you might chime in like you know these would be for some of us more FYI that these are going on um, and not necessarily hard invitations, but at the same time they're relevant for your group. So she created these in the group um, and, and how she did that was she went to the events tab and she was able to click the blue button and it expanded to her being, being able to create the event. Once the event's created, you can also click on the calendar view here, um, the left side that I've highlighted and see it in calendar form. Oops. Oh, where are we going? Um, uh, January was a little plain, <laughs> you know, it's January, we're just getting back, but you can see that the February 19th event coincides with the, co the February 19th event on the calendar view, and then you'd be able to click that and expand it. Yeah, and Kelly, those in particular, um, these are a great example of just something that's informational. These are calls for proposals for two mm -hmm. different um, events that are being oh, one CSP, is Educause. Okay. Yeah, one's Educause and one's OLC. So if you actually clicked in and you were in Workplace and you clicked on that to read more in the description, it'll tell you that it's a call for mm -hmm. proposals. So that's informational. I don't need, I don't have a need to invite everyone to do that. I just want you to know that it's there. And if you want to partake in it, you can say that you're interested or going or just follow up with it. Right. You might have like um, a happy hour at OLC Innovate though that right. you would invite and everybody that would be <laughs> yep. And sometimes they do host um, sessions for our SUNY people. So we would want to uh, invite anybody who is attending. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, I'm going to move on. Um, so obviously we're we're also using other tools outside of workplace. It's, that's not a secret, it's not a scandal, obviously. Um, so you can export your um, calendars, your, excuse me, your events into your own calendar, whether it's iCal, Outlook, Google Calendar, maybe if you use something else, we can make sure that works. Um, and that's really helpful for you. Um, because you can encourage everyone to do that or you can do it yourself if you're very you're really interested and you don't think that um, like Aaron might not be sending you a calendar invitation for the call for proposals through Outlook but you might find this is like oh my god I need to remember to do this so you can actually export the event by clicking on the, the three dots here and selecting that and then adding that to your calendar and then of course you can then edit that to to maybe better suit your need, like what you need it for. So, you know, she's doing a call for proposals. You need to put like, you know, complete proposal by 8 a.m., you know, it, whatever you have to do to remind yourself. Um, everyone has their ticks and or trips, you know, and tricks for how they, they organize themselves and motivate themselves, but um, just know that that is there. The other thing that you can do when you're in creating an event, um, and this is what pops up on the left-hand side when you're, you know, creating the actual event for the group, is you can change the frequency or choose the frequency. So if you're in a group or you're the administrator of a group and you're having a weekly or monthly call, or maybe it's a call that happens you know, the first Tuesday of every month, you can actually customize that field and create these um, calendar events as reoccurring. So you don't have to set up all of them. 
you don't have to make 12 or 24 or 36 of these events. You can make one and set the frequency. If you have a webinar link, you'll just want to make sure that that is like your meeting room or that that's the correct information for the whole series. So just something to think about. But if it's more, um, sometimes people use it as a reminder to submit certain reports. You could make that as an event as well to, as a more of a reminder and, and let everybody know that you've created this. Um, so it pops up for them if it's something you need there. I can give another example of how mm -hmm. we might use um, a recurring event. So um, the online teaching area, um, mm -hmm. they do monthly sh webinars to showcase some of their resources. And that those, are, those happen over and over again. Um, so what oftentimes will happen is Willow will go in and use the same event and just change the date um, for the next month's occurrence. So um, mm -hmm. they set it as a recurring event and then they just go in and change the date for the next one instead of setting up, you know, four or five in advance. So mm -hmm. they just kind of repurpose the same one. So that's another exactly. thing to do definitely be mindful. Hey, yeah, and you can go. So when I host my open hours, I never know when they're going to be. So you can actually go back to your past events and grab that content. So if you have the same uh, explanation or the same discussion description for your calls or for your event, you can find that as well. So you don't have to recreate the wheel that way as well. Um, that's what I do. I'm always like, what do I say for this? I go back and look. Uh, <laughs> so it's all kept somewhere for you. Um, and then we want to move on. So we kind of talked a little bit about this in SUNY announcements and SUNY in the news, but we have what's called default groups that um, as the, the administrators of the platform, we have um, chosen as groups for new members to make a soft landing into workplace. So if they're not a member of any group, they are automatically included. And then groups that we felt were helpful and, um, you know, really helped reinforce the the nature and the necessity for a workplace as a collaborative space where um, folks at, who are on one campus could feel more connected to both uh, other campus colleagues across the state but also the system in general um, and those are we have four groups right now but we think as Chancellor Johnson um, becomes more uh, comfortable on our campus as well as our new provost and our new CIO um, we may have other default groups that we automatically add everyone to. Um, you know, again, we're really trying to get our campus uh, people to feel more at home at, in the SUNY universe, but also help broadcast our messages, um, you know, to a bigger base. And obviously, we just talked about it before, share your good news out as well. Uh, so those are SUNY the news, SUNY announcements, comments, help, and announcements, and our Center for Professional Development. So Suiting the news, sharing the good news, announcements, uh, broadcasting what's going on and how they can be a part uh, on a larger scale across the system. Help and announcements, it's really um, help, right? Uh, assistance, but also functionality updates if something's going on, like some of you might be aware, um, we're upgrading some of our single sign-on processes on the back end, so it's triggering an error for new users. So we've shared out that alternate link that a new user can try to join Workplace. Um, that's something that we hope they'll have cleared up very soon, but that's the sort of things that we're posting in there. And obviously I'm creating events for those help webinars that, that people can join. We also have everyone in our Center for Professional Development group so that we know that you know what's available to you um, on, a, on a monthly basis, on a yearly basis regarding your own professional development and so that you have the opportunity to not hear about it a third hand and B after it happened. So if you're on a campus where you have to request professional development funds way in advance, we want you to know as soon as those events become live that that opportunity is out there for you. Um, we don't want you to have to wait around for a forwarded email or you know something like that. We want you to be able to go in, find the information, send your paperwork and hopefully get approved right away. And I, I know that that's a reality for some of you because that was a reality for me on a campus and I think that um, we really want to try to get you um, these opportunities quicker. So, um, you know, that's, that's really what we have. Um, so we also want to make sure that people are aware that we're doing this so that you don't feel that you need to take those posts that you find and share them again in another group. Um, 
And if your group members haven't taken themselves out of the group, which you can, FYI, so hopefully you don't have a mass exodus right now, but um, you can leave these groups if you're not interested or you feel like even though you've changed all your notifications, you still are getting too many, that's perfectly fine. You can all always go back and look at what's going on in those groups. But for the most part, people aren't leaving them. So what that means is that people are seeing these posts already. So if you see something in SUNY announcements and you simply reshare it, someone has already probably seen that and now it's like old news, right? Or it's redundant and you think, and you are, you are doing a great thing. But what I would encourage you to think about is if you see it in SUNY announcements or SUNY in the news or wherever you're seeing it in these default groups, to make sure that you put your own spin on it if you're sharing it. So, you know, a good example of that would be, I shared a, an article about um, scientists making lava the other day um, at Buffalo. You should definitely check it out and SUNY in the news. It's a pretty cool video. Um, so if someone just shared that to a science group, let's say it's just like lava maniacs, you know, loving their lava that they're creating. Um, people are, have already seen that because they're in the SUNY in the news group. However, if I shared that lava story from the New York Times in that group, I would then maybe say something that's more relevant to what I'm looking for. So check out this article that was posted here. Um, you know, I think that we should try to do this. Does anybody know where we can get the material? And does anybody have a space that we can use? Then the conversation isn't really check out the article, read it. It's, I want to get something from you. I want you to tell me if you have the material that was referenced in this video slash article. It's a much different conversation and completely fine. And you're getting what you wanted out of it instead of simply sharing it, which you might hope that the conversation is going to happen and it might not. So feel free to do that. I think that's the best way to harness the power of the default group. So when you see something at in the CPD group, maybe it's um, project management's coming up, you might share it into the Open SUNY group and ask, you know, I saw this, this event in the CPD group, has anybody ever used this from, you know, an online teaching perspective? And then how did you um, use it afterwards? Uh, again, that's probably a, not a great example, but that's a different way to package your question to get what you're looking for out of it. Um, and this is my slide, you know, centralizing posts and trying to reduce those redundancies. When you are excited, when you see it on workplace, you want to do something with it. Um, so I would say, don't be afraid to make the ask or promote it in a different way that gets people actually talking to you. Um, or the other flip side is, let's say it's an article about Aaron. Let's say Aaron was making the lava. You could share it into that group that Aaron's in and give her a compliment about it and ask her for something. It's really about taking that initial content. I saw Aaron in the chat say, uh oh. Um, you know, taking that initial content and, and using it to frame your question differently. Um, you know, rephrasing it, sharing it, or, um, you know, just trying to make a better, a better use of that default conversation. You can also, so let's say the article about lava is there, you can actually tag your colleague in it if it's more of a one-on-one -on -one question. Just comment underneath it and use the at symbol, so at Erin, and Erin will pop up and you can select her, and then ask her your question right there, and don't feel like you have to share it necessarily to a larger group. Um, so that's another option to sort of change that conversation. Um, Aaron, do you have anything to add at this point besides your lava making ability? Yeah, this is terrific. I never knew I had these skills. No, um, I don't have anything to add at this point. Okay, thanks. Uh, sorry. And then the, the, the follow-up question to that was, I find myself having to post myself in multiple groups. And, and that's different depending on your, um, your specific experience. But if, if you find yourself having to share out the same article or the same announcement to multiple groups, you might want to take a step back, and, and I can definitely help you with this too, and take an inventory of your group members. And if there's a lot of duplication, we might want to consider collapsing one of the groups or um, so letting everyone know we have two groups that are very similar. We have like, um, what's a good example? Oh, we have salt and we have pepper. Um, you know, we're both talking about the same sort of thing in here. So I 
I'd like to move it, our groups to be salt and pepper group A, and then group B I'm going to use as a sugar group. And that could be, it's a little confusing, I realize now that I'm hearing it. But essentially what I'm explaining is, if you have two groups that are talking about a lot of the same, like let's say topics, um, a lot of the same people are in them, you, you might wanna like rename the, the one group, like whichever one group has more engagement and more files, name it something else and then repurpose that group for a different conversation. Or you might find that you only need one group and then we can just delete the other group. We can pull the content that you think is valuable from one of the, the group spaces and save it or re-upload it to the group that you're, um, you're going to be moving forward with and delete that other one. So if you have, you know, cat enthusiasts and cat lovers groups out there, you might want to stick with cat enthusiasts and fold, you know, just completely fold cat lovers, make sure that all the members are in, are in both. Um, there's no shame in that. You can also archive a group. So what that means is it's not strictly deleting it, but you can't add any new content to it. The administrator still holds administrative rights, so they can reopen the group at any time. But when you travel to the group, it'll be grayed out and it'll actually tell you, um, you know, this group is archived. So you can't do anything with it, but you can look at the content. So if you have a lot of good conversations and you don't really necessarily know how you to best save them, you can simply archive the group and refer back to it until you feel that you've gotten everything out of it. And then we can delete it or you can leave it um, permanently archived. It's really up to you as the administrator. Uh, we wanna make sure that you're utilizing workplace, um, you know, the most effective for what you need it to. And again, I can always help. And I know Aaron just put in the, the chat, like you can cross check the members and bring them in. It's very simple and I can do that for you. What I spent my Christmas, or excuse me, my winter break doing, which really wasn't winter break, I was here. Um, I just like to call it that because um, a lot of you, you weren't here. But I um, went through a lot of groups that needed to be made uh, into multi-company groups, meaning that they could invite guests, but they hadn't initially been set up like that. And what I did was I pulled um, all the files down, I got a list of all the members and I recreated those groups. And then once everyone was in, I made an announcement that we had recreated the group. Obviously they got an, a notification that they were added. And then I posted on the group I was closing that I was closing that group. And then I did it. So people were like, oh my God, I understand. Got it, all the contents over here and I've already been moved over. So I can help you with that as well. I can really be your concierge and your, your number two uh, in that project as well. Um, you know, you, you know your colleagues best, so you know what you're talking about in this environment and also you know who should be in what group. Um, so don't feel like you need to stick with these two groups. If, if one's really taking off and one is really lagging, we can um, mix and match to make it fit um, because what we want to do is maximize the engagement and the collaboration that's happening in the group space. It's not really about numbers of groups for us, um, but we do have over 430 groups uh, at this point. Just a little, a little plug there. Um, and then... Um, and then something you may have seen, um, you know, if you feel like your posts are getting a little tired or you, you, it's like priority, right? You're posting a lot, you have a lot of documents, but maybe this is something different. So let's say that you're posting a lot of metrics, there's a lot of procedural documentation, and you really feel that uh, you want to post about uh, this fun conference you're doing, and you feel like it might get lost because there's so much like flat documentation going on in workplace, there's a lot of conversation going on, and this is much different. This is like a big creative boost or, or something you want to get people's attention with. You can actually create in a group like a blog or newsletter that's called a doc. So a doc, you know, short for document, is um, if you're an old, old time Facebook OG, you'll remember that there was the note. It still exists, sort of, but the doc is a great uh, space for you to use if you want more of that newsletter feel, if you want to be able to embed, um, excuse me, photos and videos in, um, you know, basically something that people can read. What happens is it when it, when it, I'm going to say folds down, but when it posts, it has a very attractive, you know, aesthetically pleasing preview. And then when you click on it, it opens up, like I want to say it pops up almost like a news article. 
So you really get that experience of, of reading it. And I'll, I'll show you an example. Um, the doc also allows you to have more formatting um, capability. You can have bullets, numerical lists, headers. You can, like I said, you can embed. Um, you can also um, link. You can really do some nice like hyperlinks. And um, you can even, uh, you know, add captions to your photos. So you're able to do a lot more to make it um, a, a much more engaging piece than just a post or, um, you know, popping a couple of Word documents together. And these are two examples of a document that, um, you know, here they are. So Carolyn's, I love this picture she has, um, really trying to, to talk about uh, her opportunities for the, the leadership to tell their own story, and then Lisa updating technical training workshops. So people, you know, you want to read more, you get, a, you get a little bit of a text preview, and then um, you click see more and it opens up. And um, Aaron said in the chat, um, you can get feedback right there as well you can go in and open the doc and edit it and you can also allow um, one of the the options that you have is that you can allow editing right on there it's, it's not the most sophisticated but if you trust your group members you can allow it to stay open so that they can either add or um, edit your document no. yeah so um kelly it's not like google google docs where it's in nope. real time right like it's not right away but once they've edited and, and saved it then their changes are there mm -hmm. but it you know I gave the example of like an agenda for something you can collaborate on that using a doc um, because people can either give feedback or if you allow them they can go right in and they can edit it um, versus a file which if I just upload the file the agenda as a file or a PDF all they can do is open it and look at it so um, it's less engaging right to do it as a file yes That's just a thought. Um, I would say that um, and I just put this in the chat when if you allow people to edit the document and I think this is something they're working on. So just bear with us while they add the functionality. You should make sure that everyone like claims their edits or puts their initials somewhere because I have had an instance where a colleague and I had a test doc and she embedded a video and I knew it was her, but it never told me, you know, that Jen did this or this was added by Jen. So this is something that um, you can you can check out um, and, and you, you can experiment with. So we just had a question in the chat about um, set up a test group. Oh no, go for it. I actually have a test group. If people would like to be added to, it's called um, Campus Test Group. Um, it's really, really, um, you know, complicated naming system, but I can add people to that. Um, you know, and I already have some there, so you can kind of see um, what's going on. And there's some other people in that group, so I can let them know it's happening and they can give you some feedback and kind of play around like they were part of your group. Um, it's a fake university and Allison Janney is the, the president. So it's pretty, it's pretty cool. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I really enjoy the docs. Uh, I think that's, they're underrated and I have been sharing it with a lot of, a lot of folks that usually generate a newsletter or there's a request to create a newsletter. Um, so definitely we'll be delving deep into that. Um, notifications. I, I want to kind of, I mean, this one's, I always talk about notifications, <laughs> but it's important. And what I talk about is like, I don't want to come from a negative space, but I want everyone to be able to know and understand that you're the only one that can control what Facebook is sending you, what workplace is sending you and how to do that. So I would love it if I could go in and say like, all right, Erin doesn't get any emails. You know, she'd love it because she, she bothers me all the time and she gets too many emails from workplace. But I want you to know how you can customize it. And then also I'll preface it by saying, if you make a choice on how you, you wanna be notified, you can always go back and reverse that choice. So if you feel like you went overboard and you like cut out too many notifications, you can always go back and you know sign up for them or change your settings. Um, I think that's important for you to, you to remember with this um, is that you can experiment and see what works for you. Um, you know, we want you to be checking it f frequently and, and really, you know, collaborating in it, but we recognize that your time is very valuable, especially time that you're spending with your inbox. Um, so there's a couple of obviously different layers to notifications. 
the, the first and most important is at a system level. So what is that platform doing with you? How is it interacting? And that, those are going to encompass more than just email. It's going to be your push notifications, notifications that pop up on your browser, on your desktop, and also sounds. So if you go to the gear icon, on the upper right, you'll be able to see, you can see your activity log, you can actually see newsfeed preferences, which I'm not going to go over the, here, but you can actually prioritize people in your newsfeed and you can mute me. So feel free, experiment with that. We can um, do another session on that or, um, you know, just I'd love to know your feedback on there. Um, and you can also you can't see company dashboards, so I apologize. That's on there. But um, your settings. So that's what we we're talking about today. Um, you'll you'll be able to click on settings, and you'll you'll come up, and you'll be able to see um, that you can edit them on the sound, like on workplace desktop, your email, your desktop and mobile. And text message is not something that we have um, right now, and I don't think we'll be rolling out, so you don't have to worry about that, but just know that it, it might be something we do in the future. Um, it's also good to know that when you click this gear icon, you'll also be able to click your preferred pronoun, um, which is something that if you're interested in, you do have the option to select. Um, so here, let me see. Um, I didn't expand it. Let me go back. Here we go. Um, I didn't expand these, but I'll show you on the screen. If you click on email, it's going to expand and it's going to give you um, a few different options for you. I've selected, so there's three options. I've selected what I'll call middle of the road. So you're getting emails some of the time, but not every time someone posts in a group that you belong to. So SUNY in the news, it's a frequent offender, right? It's three times a day. So you're getting at least three emails just from that one group we don't necessarily want you to get those emails so you, if you don't if you're not interested in getting those you can simply go to emails and say that i only want emails that um you know are for my security because i go to workplace all the time and i check it you might also um you know be like me and do middle of the road um or you can have them all on i would encourage people to keep all their notifications on if it's a reminder to go to workplace and check what's going on. So I think that's in incredibly important to remember. Some people say that they like to sit down at their desk with their lunch and go through their workplace notifications. It's not everyone though, and I recognize that. Um, you can also edit your notifications on a group level. So this is where we get into prioritizing content. So while you might be middle of the road or all emails turned off for the most part, you can actually make sure that you're getting your notifications from your group at the same time. And what you would want to do is go to like Open SUNY or what, what your favorite group of choice, and you can see this in action. It should be right next to the joined icon and the shared, um, or excuse me, share. You'll be able to click on notifications and it'll give you three options. All posts, highlights, and off. So highlights is um, lots of interaction on a, on a post or if you are following people or you've identified people as your colleagues in your org chart on Workplace, you'll um, get those notifications. So Aaron Maney uh, posted in Open SUNY. Okay, Aaron Maney, you know, where I'm following her, I'm making sure I get her information. Um, me, because I'm in Workplace a lot, I see everything, I turn a lot of them off. Uh, you'll also get a notification on your screen when someone posts. You'll also get your little red um, icon on the bell that you have a notification there as well. So um, again, it's really up to choice what you feel most comfortable in, but know that you have that option. And again, if you feel like you're missing these notifications, if you're not getting notifications and you feel like you're missing posts, you can always go back and try a different level. Um, you know, take them for a test ride to see what really fits your um, your life at this point. Um, and then if you're really fed up or it's just not working for you and you keep getting the same emails, the first thing you should do is contact me so I can look into it, report it to Facebook as a possible bug. Um, but you can also unsubscribe right from the emails in your inbox. And essentially that would say like, I don't want to receive these emails from Workplace. If I click unsubscribe, it's going to 
confirm with me that I want to unsubscribe. And basically it was about updates on your coworkers since you last logged in. So while, you know, Facebook is our processor in this workplace environment, they are running a little bit of artificial intelligence. And one of these is suggestions or um, things that have happened with your coworkers. So for a while there, I was getting this email. It was like updates from workplace. Like, here's what's going on. Here's what you missed. And, and I didn't feel like I needed that you know, because I'm like the queen of workplace. So I logged out. And when I confirmed that I wanted to log out, it, um, it sent, told me that I have opted out of it. So we can always go back in and manage those if you feel like you did something on accident as well. Um, but it is helpful to know that you can unsubscribe right from your inbox. Um, so that's, those were the questions that, um, you know, Aaron had posed to me. And I know we had some questions in the chat. Um, we kind of were, were taking them as they came in, but there was one about edited. So, so the question was, when you edit a post, how do you know if it's been updated? And you're right, Aaron had replied back and said that it doesn't say that the post has been edited like regular Facebook. The idea is that, um, you know, if you have a major edit to it, I would comment the the edit below. But if it's more like a spelling error or something that has been corrected or you just need to add to it, I would I would that's more of like something that not everyone necessarily needs to know, but it's there for you as a convenience factor so that like, oh I I, I spelled that word wrong or I miss you know I, I misrepresented that. You can go back in and edit that and then you can still comment it like we talked about commented below the comment will for some cases generate a notification to some people, but um, they'll be able to see that whole story of the post there as well. So it's not as um, specific, you know, sometimes I go in, I had this story, um, oh, it's my story. I had uh, up uploaded an MP4 the other day and my link wasn't ready for YouTube. So I didn't really have the opportunity to, um, to share that out when I wanted to. Uh, so, so what I did is I uploaded the MP4, and then when I went back in, I edited that post, and I actually um, said, you know, here's the link to the YouTube, and I put that in there so that no one really missed a beat, and I, to be honest, I was sort of sweating that someone was going to see it and be like, I can't see this, this, you know, this link, or I can't download this MP4, you know, that sort of thing, so luckily that didn't happen, but um, I'll show you that. So I had uploaded this as an MP4 for people that wanted to download it. And then when my link was ready, I came in here, I clicked edit post, and I added the YouTube link. I should note that you can also see that you can see the edit history. So if you have a group with a bunch of, um, you know, of edits that you've made, and you know, you see like, I don't know which one is which anymore. My coworker, like Aaron keeps telling me that, um, you know, this is wrong. You can go back and see the edits um, that happened. And obviously I, I edited it a bunch of, bunch of times, you know, cause that's me, but um, you'll be able to refer back to this should you need it. Um, and I'll show you. Oh, so it's a secret group. So if you wanna, reach out to me afterwards. I don't know. Right? Is this the right? Yeah. So I just added, Aaron's already in this group. This is the campus test group. So if anybody else wants to join, just either put it in the chat or reach out to me because it is secret. So you can't see it. Um, but I have like 17 members and this is where I go to test things too. Um, so you'll be able to, to see what's going on. Um, you know, uh, you know what I'm working on, like oh, some of my unattractive videos. Um, you know, if you're not aware, we can um, stream Zoom to Workplace. So I was testing that out, do a lot of tests in here, but you'll see if you go to my files, this is where docs live too. So you'll see the difference is in the type. So the PDF, you know, the images, if it was a, a, a Word document, you know, a Word doc, it would come up, Excel, what have you. And you'll see that I have two documents. So this is my first fake one with my president, um, Allison Janney, um, you know, and this is what I've created. So it's a little fun. It's a little different. People can still react. They can still comment, just like Aaron had mentioned. If I edit it, 
you'll be able to see that I can change this photo, I can change all the text. When I click the text, you'll see that over here, a paragraph tool uh, appeared. So I have a bunch of headings, I have bullets, I can make something a quote, or I could put my own code in if I needed to. Um, if you wanted to hyperlink, you would go, this is text specific, you know, bold, italicize, you could link right there. Um, when I click on the photo, I can remove it, I can left, center, right, justify, and I can also edit a caption. Same with embedding the YouTube video. YouTube is the preferred spot to embed from. So if you have a, like an MP4, I would recommend that you either create, you know, just like a burner YouTube account, or if you already have one, um, to upload it and then embed it there as well. Or if it's a video that's already on YouTube, you can simply go over here and link to the link that you need um, to share. So that's one example. Um, it's always hard to get out of these without removing it or deleting it. So <coughs> bear with me. Um, my second one was more of a, a college feel where I was talking about what was going on on campus. And just again, same sort of thing. You're, this is what it looks like when you call out a quote. Um, again, more photos. Pablo Picasso is going to be the art exhibit. This is a great college to go to. Um, you know, we're having a, a, a reception. So people can save it. Again, they can comment. Um, something that's a, a newer functionality that you might not be aware of yet is that you can now attach a file in the comments where before you could only attach a photo. So um, if that's something that you need to use, it is now there for you. Um, so that is the document. Um, in terms of events, I do have some fake events that I've created. Um, you can see that these events took place in 2018. Um, this is that events view we, we spoke about. The calendar is going to look terrible because nothing's going on. Um, but you'll see this handy dandy create an event. So when you click on that, you'll be able to see all of the options, including the frequency for you. Um, and this is what we talked about if you want to physically like invite them all, get it triggering a notification, or if it's more of that FYI post, um, that's there, there for you as well. Um, so you can go back to the events and here's my event for homecoming. Like it's, this is a crazy place at Harvard. We had this event here I am hosting. And then um, you can export the events here. And then you can either send an email to yourself, um, which is going to be your institutional account that you're using to sign up for Workplace, or um, save it to the calendar and it downloads. That's how, that's how I prefer to do it, is to download it and then click on it. Um, but yes, this is recorded as well. Um, so that's the event. I'm trying to think, Erin, was there anything else that we said we would share when we got on here? Um, oh, I'll show you my personal one. So again, lower lower left hand side, if you were looking for events, you know, some of these options you won't see on yours, but you'll be able to see in real life my upcoming events and then um, my calendar view. You can see that there's nothing coming up in, later in July and then it, it sections it out monthly for us um, here. And then I don't have any celebrations, but you can also see your past events. So these are events that every event you've been invited to, whether you responded, attended or not. Um, so you can go back. So if I, again, if I wanted to recreate this event, um, I would just simply be able to come here and, and grab this text because I'm, I'm gonna say lazy, but um, you know, sometimes it's hard to remember like, what did I call that? Or what wording did I use? Um, and you can always go back and you can also go back and see who attended your event and who was interested for follow up. So, you know, if I look um, to people that were interested that maybe didn't attend, you know, I can send an email to um, Brenda and say, Brenda, you were interested in this, but you didn't come. Do you want the slides? You could also post that right in the um, discussion of the event if you wanted to. Uh, right here and then everybody would get ping that you had posted in the event space but um, again it's whatever you're more comfortable with um, all right Aaron we've got like two minutes yeah so. great. I didn't see any other questions that we might have missed I saw that some people were um, requesting to join that group so I know you'll mm -hmm. approve them when you get there and 
if anyone does have a question, feel free to unmute yourself or you can type it in the chat. Yeah. And Kelly can also address something that wasn't covered. You know, if there's another feature that you're curious right. about. Well, it's just, also um, great to reach out to. You can catch yeah. her on the workplace chat almost any time of day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Here's a lava article too. I posted it yesterday in SUNY in the news because I was talking, you know, about that if you were interested and you can actually watch the video. But um, yeah, so you can always schedule a post. I think that's super important to know. Um, so if you're working on a group, but you're not necessarily, or excuse me, a post, but you're not necessarily ready to share, um, you can start your, your um, text. And then if you go down here to this drop down arrow, you can save it as a draft. Um, so now I've, I've scheduled some stuff to go out that's already completed and I have drafts. So I can go to my, click the draft and see that I can either post it now or edit it. Obviously I'm gonna edit it, um, you know, if I, if I need to. I'm also, I'm going to delete it because I, I found out that I didn't need that anymore. That wasn't an issue. Um, you know, the other thing is obviously the scheduling. You can come down here and schedule the post and you can either schedule it like when they suggest is always going to be nine o'clock in the morning on, you know, usually it's the next day, but this will be Monday when you can pick a, a custom time that you need it to post. Um, if abstracts open at noon, you want to make sure that it posts at noon. And then um, here's what I have, like we talked about when I get stories or someone sends me a story, I post. So we've got one more running at four o'clock today and then Mondays have already been started. Next week's been started. So um, always looking and I could always jumble stuff around if you said like, we want this to go out now, but we recognize, you know, something's going on. I can always reschedule and you as the user can always reschedule. So um, yeah, if you, if you want to join the, the test group, let me know. Um, it's been pretty quiet in there, but um, we'll probably be testing some integrations, which, um, you know, when we talk about integrations, it's really this like Dropbox and Google Drive right now. And we're working on bringing on OneDrive and SharePoint in the next couple of months. And basically that's, when we talk about that, it's a convenient way for you to go to your cloud storage and pull a file that you already have. Um, this can also be accomplished by using um, basically a link. But if you don't even want to share the link, you just actually want to share a document preview, you can grab it from your other drive or your other cloud storage and post it here. Just want to make sure that your posting permissions on that side are um, allowing other people to see it. Um, it's, it's basically like an alternative to you downloading a document um, and then re-uploading or having to find that link and generate that link. So um, something for you to check out. All right, thanks, Kelly. So mm -hmm. since it's one o'clock, I'll let everybody go, but um, I will be posting the recording. And um, for those, you know, I'll post it for anybody who wasn't able to attend. And uh, you'll be able to find that in the online teaching group in Workplace. So reach out to Kelly, reach out to myself if you have further questions. And thanks for spending your lunch with us. Oh, sure. Thank you, everyone. Have a great weekend.